Hello, my name is Mr. Chu and I welcome you to my study room. If today is your first time of coming here, then kindly consider subscribing to this channel for more videos. Today we are going to start a very interesting study on a circuit theorems. Let's go straight to the lesson. Before we start this topic, there are some basic things I think we need to know about circles to help us understand the actual topics very well. So this is how a circle looks like. A circle is basically any place shape that has equal distance from the center to any part of its circumference. So taking this circle, for example, O here is the center of the circle and along this path is the circumference so the circumference of a circle is just the same as the perimeter of the circle which is the total distance around the circle so we are saying that for any plane shape to qualify to be called a circle the distance from here the center here to any part along this path should be the same throughout if that happens, then that is a circle. And that distance is called the radius of the circle. This is the center of the circle. And this is the circumference or the perimeter of the circle, which is the total distance around the circle. And any line drawn from the center of the circle to the circumference is called the radius of the circle. So later in this topic anytime i mention the radius of a circle i'm just talking about something like this oc so this is the radius any line from the center of the circle to any part it can be from here to here it can be from here to here it can be from the center to any part of the circumference qualifies to be called the radius of the circle then we can also talk about an arc we have point a here and then we have point b here so when you move along the circumference from here from here to here along the circumference along the circumference not along the line but along the circumference, meaning that from here to here qualifies to be called an arc. So an arc is any part of the circumference of a circle. Then we can also talk about a chord. A chord is any line drawn to touch any two points of the circumference of a circle. So clearly, this line AB is a chord. This line AB is a chord because it touches two parts of the circumference of the circle. Then that is not all. We also have the diameter of a circle. So the diameter of a circle is also a chord. But then it is a special chord that passes through the center of a circle. So already we define what a chord is. A chord is any straight line that touches two points on the circumference of a circle. When a chord passes through the center of a circle, that chord qualifies to be called the diameter of the circle. There are so many other things we can learn about the circle that will help us to understand circle theorems very well. So let's go back to the starting. Then another thing I want us to learn about is the segment of a circle. Let me just put it simply this way. A chord divides a circle into two segments. So in the course of the study, Whenever I mention segments, it means that a chord is involved. A chord divides a circle into two segments. So taking this first circle, 
this chord AB divide this circle into two segments. So one of the segments is the shaded region here. And the part that is not shaded is another segment. So when the chord is in such a way that it divides the circle into two segments that are not equal, then the smaller segment is called the minor segment. And the bigger segment is called the major segment. In the case of the diameter, as we've learned already, the diameter divides the circle into two equal parts because it passes through the center. So with that one, it will have two equal segments. That will be semi-circles. That is what it means to say the segment of a circle. It is just the two parts we get when, we, when a chord is drawn in a circle. Then that is not all we need to know. We also we also be using or making use of a chord subtending an angle. To subtend an angle means to make an angle at a point. For example, when we say this diameter AB subtends an angle, let's say there's a point M here, and we say the diameter subtends an angle at M, we are just saying that straight lines are drawn from A from a and B to meet at M and the angle forms formed at M we will say that that angle is subtended at M so let me just join the lines quickly and let's see the diameter AB subtends an angle theta at the point M that only means that it makes the angle theta at the point M. We can take a few more examples. So here, the chord is called AB. We can say that the chord AB subtends an angle M at the center O, and the same chord subtends an angle N at the point P. So when we say we subtend an angle, which we'll be using more for the theorems, that is what it means. It means that a straight line is drawn from each end of the chord to meet at a point. And then the angle form at the point, then instead of saying the angle is formed, we can also say the angle is subtended there. Then we can take the very last one. So let me call this angle X. Then I can say that the chord MN subtends an angle X at the point Q. It doesn't matter. It can subtend the angle along any part of the circumference and any of the segment, meaning that this same chord can subtend an angle here and it doesn't spoil anything. Then another thing we need to note, because we'll be using it in explaining the theorems, is a tangent. When we say a tangent to a curve or a tangent to a circle, what does it mean? A tangent is just a straight line drawn to touch a circle at a point. So taking this circle for instance, the line MN is a tangent to this circle because 
is a straight line that touches the circle at maybe let me call here uh, p touches the circle at the point p so when a straight line touches the circle at any point at all along the circumference then we say that that line is the tangent to the circle so in explaining the theorems we are going to involve chords tangents and other things that we'll be talking about that's why we need to know what each of these things mean yeah good so that is a small introduction to the topic circle theorem so let's just recap quickly what we just did right now we found what a circle is by saying that the circle is a plane shape with which have equal distance from the center to any part of the circumference then we went ahead to point out that we to point out the center of the circle and what the center of a circle means and what the circumference of a circle is then we found out what a chord is and then what an arc is that is not all we also found out the the diameter of a circle is also a chord but it's a special chord that passes through the center of a circle then that is not all we found we explain what it means when we say an angle is subtended by a chord at a point then we didn't just end there we also found out what the tangent to a circle is and then we said that the tangent to a circle is a straight line that touches the circle at a point and i concluded that we we, we found the meaning of all of these because we'll be using them to explain the theorems to the circle so in my next video and the subsequent ones we are going to take the theorems one by one proving them because that is what a theorem means a theorem is a mathematical statement established by the means of a proof so by the means of a proof we are going to take each theorem one by one so these are facts about circles that are proven and for calculation purposes we are going to use these theorems which are proving facts to calculate angles at different parts of circles without using protractor that is the aim of this topic so at this point i will again encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that yet so that you can take explanation to each of these theorems one by one with very relevant examples that are past questions to guide your understanding thank you and see you in the next video while we start the circuit theorems. Bye-bye.